Have you ever wondered what base after base, Geometry Dash's fifth easiest level, would look like if it was an extreme demon? No? Well, too bad, because in this video, I'm going to show you how I turned base after base from this into this. Featuring crazy challenges, straight fly, and a special guest appearance. Ah, uh, yes. Base after base. This is certainly a level. I used to not like base after base very much, but now that I've been playing it a lot recently, trying to like come up with ideas, I've realized that this structuring is really cool. Like there's different structures instead of just a bunch of these slabs. I think this has a lot of potential to be a great super buffing level. And I have some fun ideas for this part, which we'll get to later. But first we got to do this first little tiny spiky boy right here. The predictable thing to do is to make a triple spike, but that's literally not even that hard. But the next most predictable thing to do is to make it quadruple spike because that's impossible but i think it's best for us all if i find a sweet middle ground and just squeeze them in a little bit this quadruple spike right here is a little bit boring as is so i think i have to spruce it up a little fancier up boom chakalaka now that looks swag right there that boy is swagged out yo <clears throat> anyways these spikes i might have a fun idea let me try it all right, so check this out. I added this weird little contraption here. So as many of you know, the yellow pad bounces you upwards. So if you try to hit the yellow pad, you go up and you die. So that's why the black orb is there. So basically this black orb slams you back down. So it's like a super precise click. And then right after that, there's a pink orb, which makes you do a tiny little jump. So I'm gonna add some spikes up here, which means you can't just hold after this and try to do a full jump and get up. So you can only pass this by hitting the pink orb. Ooh, and I have another idea. I'm gonna move this structure down that's already there. I'm actually going to combine them, I think. Add some chains to make it look nice. And I'm going to add a black orb. This might be too hard, but let me just try it. Not going to lie, I might have made this too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's possible. But in all honesty, that is literally a frame perfect timing. <laughs> and I don't want to make this impossible. I just want to make it an extreme demon, all right? So I think I'm going to get rid of that and just put the medium spike there. So, I mean, still hard, but not as hard. Bro, why does Robtop do this sometimes? Look, all these blocks are, like, not on the grid properly. If it was, it'd be like this. Oh, Robtop, you're killing me. Like, literally, why? What is the reason? You know what? No, I'm not dealing with that. That just makes everything hard. <laughs> like, look, bro, even the shading is messed up because they squeezed them in. I love this set of structures, but I gotta think of something good to do with justice. Oh! <gasps> I have a really funny idea, and it may not be faithful to base after base, <laughs> but I think it's better. So you know that one part in Slaughterhouse? <laughs> Could we talk about how Robtop just forgot to fill in this area with a ground spike? Like, why, Robtop? Why? I don't know if I should leave it blank to honor Robtop, or if I should just fix that for all of our sake. Okay, I decided I'm gonna fix it, and I'm adding this little bush here as commemoration for the memorial of the blank space. And these don't gotta be all like that. I'm gonna fix those because Robtop is big dumb. Please don't unmod me for that Robtop. So for the next jump, I think I'm gonna once again super buff it like this. Or actually I have an even funnier idea. Hey look, it's a two spike jump. No, it is not just any two spike jump. It's hard. Yeah. And I have a theory. I feel like you might be able to clear this whole little thingy down here without actually landing on it. So let's just try that. That might be really funny. Just a full floor of spikes. Wow, that is definitely possible, and honestly, it's kind of easy. I think I think I could get away with adding another spike down here. Also, I'm testing this, and this is actually impossible, so I'm just going to move it in like that. Although, that might, that's too easy, then. Ugh, super buffing is so hard. These two jumps are, like, seriously hard, though. <laughs> like, I'm in slow motion mode, and I still can't do them. You know what? That's just a little bit too unfair. I'm just going to, like, move it over like that. Okay, so I set up this little part, some fun challenges here after all this hellish jumps. First of all, you have to make a nice timing to jump right between these spikes and then jump back out again. Hit the side of the structure just where the little spike is not touching. And then this blue pad launches you upwards, and then you hit the blue orb, bounce back down at a late timing, and you leap over onto the next structure safely. And I'm thinking for this next part, I want to introduce some robot gameplay. Because I think robot is just a super awesome game mode, and also, like, it's pretty close to cube, so I'm not changing the level that much. So it's still staying pretty true to the original. So similar to this jump right here, these jumps in the robot are super hard. If you couldn't tell by looking at the fact that it's literally a block with a spike just covering the whole thing. Except the hitboxes are super stupid, so it's more like 75% of the block you could jump on. But it's still really precise, you know? I think right here I'm actually gonna get rid of those and put in like the invisible fake ones. So this way you just gotta do like a little micro jump to get over that. I'm also gonna add like an exclamation point here as like a warning like, it's about to go down. 
So I've made it for this part. You have to do a bunch of these precise robot timings, of course. But instead of going down here like you normally would, you have to hit the corner of this slab and then do a really tall jump and just barely make it onto this structure, which you're normally not supposed to touch. And that opens up some different gameplay options. Because let's be real, this coin is literally trash, bro. It's easier in the normal level to just go down and fall in than actually do the gameplay. That is an F tier coin, which is why GD Colon is joining me to help fix these horrible coins and super buff them in the process. Hello, Mr. GD Cologne. Hi, hello. Oh my god, the, the missing spike, you filled it in with a freaking... <laughs> I added no. a little bush as like commemoration. It's a memorial of the missing space. <laughs> no, you have to keep it. No. Just delete more. <laughs> Just delete. Remove... It doesn't help. Right? Wait, maybe no, we can turn robot. that into part of the coin route. No. Oh yeah, you can launch yourself with the robot and skip the black orbs. Oh. It's fun. Keep it. Wait, maybe that could be something related to the coin. Eh? No, I have an idea. <laughs> oh no, I have what? Such a, I have such a stupid idea. <laughs> What? <laughs> Hold on. Oh god, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Scroll up. Scroll up. <laughs> <laughs> That's then, perfect. Uh... So how would you rank this first coin? S A B F. Uh, it's like a solid S. Solid S? Let's go. I was thinking I want to make at least one of these cool structures like a fake. Wait a minute. I think I'm seeing something here. Are you guys seeing it? Boom! We have extremely derpy, weird, kind of looking, messed up, malformed Fitzgerald. You must not forget to say hello, Fitzgerald. Our favorite super buffing monster. And to make it actually work with the gameplay and still like have the same structuring as the original level, I kind of just combined these two pillars into this like long structure weird looking thing that still looks like it could be in base after base. I don't know why Robtop just forgot this, but I'm going to add corner pieces in just to make it look you know, like an actual structure. Never forget corner pieces when you guys are making levels. Just fill in the holes. I might be able to get away with putting triple spikes here. Cause if you time it just right, you can, eh, eh, I don't know. I feel like that's too hard, man. I don't want this to be impossible, like I said. I'll just put those there, I guess. Now to figure out how to super buff these orbs. All right, just listen to this song and tell me what you think. Does that not just call for some blue orb spam? Because that, that's what I hear. When I hear that part of the song, that's what comes to mind. So we're adding that in. Hope you guys enjoy spam. Not spam mail, but geometry dash spam. Oh, that was close, but I did it. And I accidentally hit this orb in like a really weird spot, like right here. So I'm going to work with that and make it so you have to hit it like super early. So I'm going to add like that right there, which now brings us to the drop. I'm excited to crack into this because I have a fun idea. So club step is of course an iconic level. I mean, heck, in the beginning of all of these levels, I put a club step monster, but I want to take inspiration from a different part of club step. And of course I'm talking about this part with like the cool invisible stuff and it's like kind of like memory. Bro, club step is such a fun level that every time I even like start playing it, I just want to try to complete it. And what? Did I just die to a bug? Man, screw that. I don't like club step anymore. Buff after buff time. So I'm gonna make it go back to cube for this maze. So my, my idea is to use these down here. Like all these with a the different shading in the block menu are the ones that like fade invisible and stuff. So I'm gonna replace all these with those. And now they'll like fade out when you get by them. So our job is to super buff this, of course. All right, so just hear me out. For the drop of this level, I decided to make some, uh, Shenanigans, we'll say. I've made like an evil maze inspired by Club Step and I guess also Silent Club Step, although Silent Club Step is inspired by regular Club Step. So by being inspired by Silent Club Step, I'd be more inspired by Club Step since that's the original inspiration. So basically what I'm trying to say is that philosophy is a battle against the bewitchment of our intelligence by means of language. Yeah, I forgot to do this part, so I'm working on that right now. I was thinking of adding like a super hard four spike jump in or something like that, but I think I have a funnier idea. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've done it. Quadruple yellow pad jumps. My creation of the century. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I gotta fix that. Or you know what? Maybe I could use that. Maybe that was a happy accident. So what if I add like another ship portal down here, and then I put an invisible saw blade inside of this portal? So if you go the normal route, you die. 
but by hitting the pad, you get that secret ship portal. I think it's a silly idea, actually. I like it. This part may or may not be broken, but I'm pretty sure it's fine. But now, we must work with Mr. GD Cologne to make the best coin possible. The first thing that comes to mind to me for uh, what we should do for this coin, it's such a stupid idea, but I feel like you should have to, like, ultimate phase your way back up with, like, a bunch of pink orbs. Later. Oh, my God. Oh my god, man, I can't do it. That's our genius creation. Second man. one. This monstrosity. <laughs> A for Andromeda. A for Andromeda. And that leads us now to the ship part. The ship part is cool, to be honest. I like the structuring. This is a lot of potential. So first and foremost, these are getting moved up a lot. So far, I've made these two little pillars you gotta fly through. But that's not enough. There's too much free space between these. Several buffs later. Here it is, the three levels of ship difficulty. Each level challenging a different ship skill. Challenge number one involves ship control and your overall curving control. So you gotta get these curves just right because you can't just click a whole bunch of times to get through this. The second one is straight fly, but tilted downwards. So like kind of straight fly, kind of not really. Call it what you want. And then level three is memory. And if I did a good job, you probably can't tell which blocks are fake, I hope. I think this is a fun way to challenge the skill of play because you have to have every type of ship skill to be able to get through this which all leads into this corridor <laughs> oh boy what do we cook up here i think i'm gonna begin by just selecting this entire structure and just moving it down now it's time we add a couple spikes so i'm thinking one here 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 so I'm going to begin by just having this super tight straight fly. And since I don't want the whole thing to just be boring straight fly, I'm going to switch it up a little bit for this part. So first, I'm going to make it straight fly, of course. You've got to wait to see where I'm going with this. So I'm going to make you come out of here and go into the mini portal. And then orbs. I did it that attempt, but trust me, it is not easy. Because if you hit one of these orbs, you just slam to these spikes and it's an automatic, brutal fatality. So for the finale, you have to slam up on the ceiling, let go at just the right point so that you fly between these two structures. And then you go back up for some last minute straight fly. I feel like it's a little easy, so I'm going to add this full size portal. Like, I'm going to put it like right in the middle, actually. So you have to center the mini ship and then go into this. Because if you go up into it too high as the mini ship, you might live as the mini ship, but then you go the full size and you just get killed by the spike right away. I think that serves as an interesting challenge. But of course, we have to figure out what to do with the third coin, which is probably one of the worst coins ever created in any level ever. The third one is is unfun to get. You don't get to do anything. You just have to hold up while you miss on actually getting to play the level. Exactly. Although in this case, you might not want to play the level because of this gameplay. <laughs> but that, that's okay. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> What is that sinister laugh for? <laughs> well, no, actually, no. Don't don't look at my screen. Don't look I at your screen. I need to look away. Look at other stuff. I'm going to make this one a surprise. Okay. Five minutes later. Okay. Am I allowed to look now? <laughs> Head over to that part of the level. All right. Drum roll. <laughs> is this a reference to Club Step? It's literally just the coin from Club Step. <laughs> I think it would be funny if it just kept going with club step after, like if you get the computers. <laughs> this has got to go in the record books as one of the most ridiculous coins. Third one, C for club step. C for club step. I'm fine with that. <laughs> I think we did a fantastic job. I think they're really, really fun. They, they match the vibe of the level. I'm pretty happy with them. I feel like base after base really doesn't need to exist in Geometry Dash, if I'm being honest. Like, it doesn't teach you anything new. It's just kind of like an awkward middle ground between dry out and can't let go. And it has the worst coins. But I mean, whatever. I'm still having a fun time buffing this. I really like how this whole ship part turned out. And of course, this crazy memory part. So now it's time to work on dry out V2. You know, I don't think I've used a mini cube at all in this level yet. I think that's what I'm going to do for this. So I'm going to put a mini portal right here, which to be honest, if I didn't put this, I could have just not put anything and then I would have been mini already. But whatever, that doesn't matter. I like this little challenge right here. I'm keeping it. And I think I'm going to add a little spam right here. And I'm clicking all of these, clicking edit special and allowing multi activate. This way you can hit them multiple times. So if you're spamming really fast, you might hit one and then it won't let you hit it again. And I just don't want that. I don't want there to be any bugs. Because when you make gameplay like this, there's bugs. A lot. And something fun I noticed, it actually syncs. Listen to this. 
Right, right, kind of matches the song. And for these, I have a little funny idea that I definitely have done before. <laughs> this evil little blue pad, blue orb timing. Man, these jumps are tough, bro. Like I've done these in normal gravity, but being upside down, it just makes it like so much harder. <laughs> Like, anytime you go upside down or backwards, which we don't talk about because everybody hates this portal, it just makes everything so much harder. So then after this madness, we're going to make more madness. So I'm going to add a pink orb right here. And I've made this evil timing. <laughs> I know Esoteric Hydra will appreciate this one. So then after this, I'm going to put a blue orb here so you go back up. All right, so we got to figure out these pillar boys right here. So I've decided I'm going to use the wave because why not? And boom, that looks super fun, doesn't it? <laughs> you know what? I have an idea. I'm going to get rid of these boring triple spikes. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to add this in. <laughs> An upside down world's hardest jump. Because that'll be fun, won't it? I feel like it looks a little weird with all these objects overlapping. So I'm just going to try something different. I made this like black bar. And if I put it over, yes, that looks good. And now there's only a little bit of more upside down stuff left. Here's a before shot, and here is an after shot. I got another one of those blue pad, blue orb timings. Then you have to time this precisely, jump over, jump into this, and here, there's not one, but two green orbs. So if you can do a double click very fast, you'll hit both of them, and then basically jump back up just like a normal jump. And then you gotta hit this pink pad late enough, throw, you land on this structure, and then you jump down, and you got a super hard four spike. Which leads us now into the finale. And you know, I think I want to try something different for all this. So I'm no stranger to using all these orbs to make like interesting, unique custom game modes. But this time I'm going to use the pink orb to celebrate all the pinkiness in this part <laughs> and make a custom game mode. And this one won't be hard at all. So first we'll just place our pink orb, edit special, allow multi activate. That's very important. Give the orb a group, use a move trigger, Go to group two, lock to player X, and we'll just do like 15 seconds. I think that should be long enough. And then I'm going to place a follow player Y trigger again to group two, 15 seconds. And if my calculations are correct, it should follow us now. And yeah, look, we're a little bouncy cube. I think this can lead to some unique gameplay if I do this right. And you know what? I'm going to add another unique thing to this, I think. So here we have a fireball. It doesn't kill you though, so I'm gonna have to add this little tiny saw blade inside. So yeah, now if you touch a fireball, you die. So I'm gonna add like a bunch of these fireballs all around. So now we've got these fireballs you gotta dodge. Work in progress, of course. So now we just gotta like map out where the cube should go and then add spikes accordingly. All right, check this out. As you can see, there's like a maze of fireballs raining from the sky as you try to get through the normal level. And I'm even going to spice it up a little bit. Instead of just keeping this weird pink background, I'm going to make it so like as you progress along, it like gets to like a deeper red pink kind of. But I'm going to make the fade time super long. So like it starts off as a bright pink and as you go along, it slowly gets darker because the fireballs are taking over. And then by the end of it, it's this dark color. I think I like that idea. So I made sure that this fireball ends up right here as you're passing it. So you can't go in between there. So by the time you get to go in there and you go up there and then you have to go through this corridor, which I have to nerf a little bit. I made it too hard. <laughs> yeah, now this one has to go down. Okay, I believe I figured out this part and I made some actual like real gameplay that makes sense. Although it is very, very hard to figure out. So good luck to anybody trying to beat this. <laughs> and I'm going to try something really cool for the end screen. And by the way, this last jump honestly isn't that hard, but not all of the levels have to have a super hard ending. <laughs> I'll, I'll be generous with this one since you have to go through fireball hell first. So what I'm going to do is get these fireballs again. Where are they? Or you know what? No, I'll try these ones and I'm going to use them to make the lettering. <laughs> yeah, check that out. Absolute fire, bro. And with that, the level is fully complete now. I added some little tiny art pieces throughout just to be a goofy goober. And I made that boring two spike from earlier into this awesome fiery demonic club step monster with fire eyes. Because I think the fire kind of like foreshadows what's coming later, you know? So yeah, let's showcase this gosh darn level.
So yeah, that concludes this video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This has been a blast to make and I absolutely love this series. Thank you all for your continued support. Thank you Colin for joining me in this video. Thank you Altalk for making the live collab editor mod, linked in the description. Feel free to go play the level on my profile, and please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. It helps me out a lot, really. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.